Hey guys, what's up? It's another uh, episode of Dipshit Garage or Dumbass Garage or whatever we've decided on. Thought I'd do a video uh, kind of uh, overviewing or doing a damage report on my gambler car after uh, King of the Hammers. And then maybe also uh, kind of do a video on how I lifted my car because it's pretty easy. Um, and I think uh, pretty basic stuff and you can get, you know, quite a bit more off-road performance out of a fucking Volvo. So anyway, <laughs> nice. So what is King of the Hammers? Well, King of the Hammers was started in uh, 2007 by a couple guys uh, who wanted to do a race with their buddies uh, where they combined uh, rock crawling uh, and kind of desert racing all in one event. Um, and this year they invited uh, Gambler 500 Hoopty Cross um, out to do an event there. So I raced in that and I did poorly, but the car did great. And we beat on it all week and now it's broken. Yeah, so King of Hammers is the, the main event, but there's uh, there's races all week. It's also kind of just like one big off-road party. Um, I didn't take a ton of video, but I took a couple and I had a couple taken of my car. So you'll, you'll see why it's broken. So this is my 1989 Volvo 240 GL. I purchased it for $500 for the Gambler 500, and I was gonna get rid of it, but I liked it so much that I kept it. Um, it does have a one inch lift on it. You really, really can't tell. Um, honestly, these cars sit up pretty high to begin with, um, but it is lifted one inch in the front and probably a little bit more than that in the back. So it's got pretty decent ground clearance. Um, like I said, they just got back. Well, no, I got back several months ago from King of Hammers and uh, the car's a little banged up. It's got a little bit of a, ooh, and oops. And there's definitely more uh, underneath all this that is very extremely fuckered. So uh, take the wheels off and I can show uh, show you guys how I lifted this thing. <laughs> so I haven't really, uh, I haven't really been in this car since King of Hammers, which was uh, back in beginning of February. And if you had told me then that I'd be considering wiping my ass with this, I'd tell you to go fuck yourself. But apparently, that's the world we live in today. And I just found, found some real gold in here. It's starting to rain quite a bit, but that's okay. Uh, this is Pacific Northwest. Pretty used to it. Um, let's talk tire size first. This is a two, uh, mm, 205 R15 General Grabber AT2. This is about as big as you can go in one of these cars without hitting... Unfortunately, this spring perch. Um, there's a couple way to lift lift these, and some people have extended the strut tubes. Um, that was a little bit more work, and I found a kit that that kind of bolted on for really good price used with tires. So pretty much a whole a whole lift kit for this thing, which is not something that's sold. I just kind of lucked out. So if you like my yeah, if you've worked on a 240, you'll maybe understand why I did that. But um, this does have 25 millimeter H and R spacers in the front, and that's just to get the tire further away from this perch. Um, it, in the future, I possibly might try to make some sort of extended coilover or something like that, so I can run slightly bigger tire, or at least just not worry about the tire contacting here. As you can see, it's been contacting here, so I'm gonna be ripping this stupid fender liner out, and it already kind of tried to do that. But uh, anyway, this strut is completely blown probably because some of the video clips I showed you earlier and the bump stop is absolutely destroyed. So I'll pop the hood and uh, show you uh, the spacer up on top. Oh yeah, it's a little crunchy under here. Anyway, the strut, oh. 
Gambler 500 whiskey. It's not bad. It's not good. Uh, what I heard about this stuff, a lot of people ask me, is it good? And I have from a very reliable source that uh, it's getting better. So, anyway. So here's a spacer. And this is, normally this strut mount would be up flush with here. This just sits on top of it. It's a 25 millimeter spacer. Um, I don't, no one actually currently makes this, but someone should. Specifically, uh, STS Machining. Uh, they should be making this. And uh, if you go bother uh, bother them on their website, maybe send them an email if you want to buy one of these, because they should be making one of these. Um, Scott, Taylor, should be making them. But no one does currently. But uh, it's pretty pretty easy. I mean, you pretty much just stick that on the top. It's pretty similar to uh, lift spacers and lots of other off-road applications, stuff like that. But it works pretty well if you're only going for a mild lift like this. So I'm pretty happy with it. So while I'm, while I'm around here, uh, this is the IPD aluminum skid plate. And I, it, King of the Hammers was not nice to this thing. Um, as you can see, it's completely bent and it cracked the weld here. It wasn't even actually all, welded all the way up, but I got it pretty much almost for cost. Um, I, this thing works pretty well for mild off-road stuff, but once you get more crazy, uh, I'm definitely going to need to move to like a steel, custom steel pan or something like that. Because this thing, I mean, I, it, it just got absolutely destroyed. And uh, at one point it got pushed up into the steering rack to the point that the rack like wouldn't it would just bind up um and that's not something you want <laughs> so uh, i probably need a new skirt. all right so here's the rear of the car um, i also put the 25 millimeter h and r spacers on here and just to kind of get the the track the same as the front and that was kind of a mistake because <laughs> um <laughs> it rubbed really bad so we had to cut out a bunch of this and this is like three layers of pretty thick metal um, it's pretty much a pain to get out I actually tried to pull it further you can see the marks there where I used uh, some channel locks to try to pull it out but uh, yeah I was rubbing pretty bad and uh, yeah I'm gonna need to actually cut most of this out probably cut some more out um, so as all angle grinder just maybe even cut out some of this I'm not really sure kind of depends on what direction I want to go with the car but anyway um, so these these are from a Volkswagen Vanagon, any two-wheel drive Vanagon. Um, they're pretty cheap. They're kind of shitty, but they're about one of them is about half the price of one built-in HD for the same application. So uh, KYB, way to go. Um, these are out of a Jeep, I believe a JK Cherokee. They're front springs. I bought them new from Amazon, AC Delco. I think it's about 60 bucks or something like that. Um, they're for the six-cylinder model. They're a little bit uh not quite as stiff as the uh i think the other ones are for a v8 or something like that maybe it's a grand cherokee i'm not really sure but there's just two springs um that are pretty much the same application and this is a slightly softer one because it's in the rear and then i used these concrete grinding wheels from harbor freight to retain it because the pigtail on it is much bigger uh, than the one in the bubble spring and then i also got these warranty seat belts from work which Perfectly bolted right in uh, to that spot, and that's going to keep it from uh, keep the spring from coming out uh, when the axle's at full droop. Um, before this, I had IPD wagon overload coils back here with a hockey puck in between this body mount, but I figured I kind of rather just have a spring that fits. Although it doesn't quite fit, it's definitely closer. Um, everything else back here, pretty much stock. Um, I do need to box these trailing arms. Got polyurethane bushings on the torque rods. And I also actually put a Spartan locker in here. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get in any video of us doing that, but we did that right before King of the Hammers and it made a huge difference. I got it on uh, Amazon for 240 bucks shipped prime. Definitely worth it. Um, I was thinking about welding it, but either way it's gonna be a lot better than the open diff. And I'm really glad that I did it. So. so I mentioned the rear trailing arms and putting boxing plates on them. Um, I forgot that I also completely bent uh, both of these front control arms. And I mean, you probably could guess why. Um, they, these things bend if you look at them and we beat the shit out of it. So uh, I'm going to need to replace these. And then there's I've got some 
boxing plates from Yoshi Fab. They're gonna go on here and hopefully make it a little bit sturdier. And I have like five fucking sets of these things, so um, shouldn't be an issue, but that's something that's kind of keeping it off the road uh, beyond the blown out struts. So anyway, that's all the damage that I did to my car uh, at King of Hammers and how I lifted it. Uh, three of these tires need to be replaced. One has like two plugs in it because we hit some shit and one de-beaded and two of them got really chopped up by the fender. Um, but yeah, we lost a little bit of trim here almost, but uh, the car did great. Pretty impressed with it. It's an excellent piece of shit. Uh, so I mentioned it, but I never really went into it. I went into what Gambler 500 was in another video, but uh, if you guys don't know about Hoopty X or Hoopty Cross, um, check it out. It's pretty much rally cross racing for really shitty cars like this. Um, you can pretty much run run whatever you uh, whatever you want as long as it has a factory roof and uh, some pretty basic safety stuff. Um, it's a great time, low cost, pretty much like the cheapest way you can get out there and race. Um, it's pretty awesome, so definitely check it out. So one more thing I'd like to do with this car. Um, another thing that we broke at King of Hammers was the dipstick tube on the other side of this transmission pan. Uh, as you can see, it's kind of exposed there. I hit a rock with it, and it completely ripped it out. Actually, uh, on that last lap when I took the jump, I completely, completely buggered it, and it lost all the fluid. So I did replace the pan, but I'd like to get a skid plate that actually goes all the way back here, because um, this stuff's pretty exposed. The oil pan, uh, I think it's steel or something like that, but this thing, this thing's pretty exposed, and it, it doesn't quite take a hit like the oil pan does. So I'd like to have a bigger skid plate. And I think that should probably have me pretty set for the future. So that's how I lifted my 1989 Volvo 240. Uh, check out, if you're interested in do that, check out uh, Lifted Volvos, uh, the group on Facebook. A lot of good information there. Uh, information on if you'd like to extend the strut tubes, do stuff like that, go, go a little bit more crazy with it. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Later.